shows or destruction of private business or destruction of public property na siasa yetu haitakuwa na vita haitakuwa ya kuharibu mali haitakuwa ya kuharibu barabara itakuwa ni siasa bila chuki na bila vita lakini kwa wakati huu kiongozi wa Kenya ni mmoja anaitwa nani na William Ruto sio wakutishwa leo wamejua hawajui hatutaki fujo hatutaki vita hatutaki kuharibu mali hatutaki kuharibu eh, vifaa ya serikali tunataka tuwe ni taifa ambayo tunaheshimu demokrasia sasa mimi sina kazi nyingine rais aendelee na mambo ya uchumi na mimi nimeweka mitego kila pahali wakijaribu kuja mimi na deal na hawa we now make this passionate appeal to the will, to the president william ruto and right honorable raila odinga to give dialogue a chance nataka niwaulize kwa heshima makasisi wetu in the same breath that you condemn the police we want to hear you condemn the violence being meted out on innocent kenyans by the perpetrators of violence and bloodshed demonstrations will not bring kenyans together but dialogue will we call upon the youth of this country to desist from being misused by selfish politicians hii vita sio vita ya raila odinga hii ni vita ya wananchi wa kenya ambao hawezi kumudu maisha gharama ya maisha haiwezi kurudi chini ukivaa sufuria kwa kichwa Raila <laughs> Raila kaleta devolution tuko huru wa kuandamana maandamano iko kwa katiba hii maandamano hata wakitoa ama watu hiyo kipengele kwa katiba hiyo wanadanganya kwa sababu tutapataji haki kama tusipoenda kwa barabara mtoto wangu ndio huyo amepigwa tia gas mtoto ameshindwa kupumua hiyo inafanyika Kenya yetu ni nini inafanyika ni nini ni nini inafanyika Kenya aswa madhara ya patrisi maandamano ya leo ilikuwa mbaya kwa sababu vijana ni kitu yenye wanashajipanga kitu ya kushangaza ni kwamba hii watu si maandamano wanafanya sasa wameanza kuharibu vitu ya watu hata hoteli yangu huku chini wameenda wamepomoa nimetoka kazi nikakuja hivyo kirende kikatokea hapo wakaniambia tupe chochote yenye uko nayo nikawapea wallet waka search wakachukua wakaniambia hii kiatu yako iko sawa nisaidie nayo nikawapea vizuri tu wakaniambia wakaenda kidogo wakarudi wakaniambia hii chaketi yako si nzuri utupe utupe nikawapea vijana wakatupora wakachukua ID wakachukua simu wakachukua pesa viatu kila kitu nikawaitisha ID wakaniambia wanaenda confirm nayo sasa mimi nikawaachia tu wakaenda interesting editor cartoon also in the standard today and you can see the slug face is going on there between right honorable Raila Odinga and Arab Singh as personified by Gado and you can see people running hell to scare their police uh, shooting on a shooting spree uh, so far people also um, have seen there it's a strewn of bodies there the bodies have been strewn all over as you can see inside uh, the editorial pages of Estada today according to Gado and they're saying a blankety blank <coughs> whatever that is is ongoing of course depicting the skirmishes that is here in the country right now and also still tread talks there is this gentleman who is uh, on the lap of uh, the government and uh, this is the tread talks that are so far we saw yesterday president william ruto holding court with uh, the delegates of uh, business delegates from us who had starkly denied meeting tread uh, cs uh, moses kuria apparently because of his loose tongue so the loose tongue is coming back to bite him and you can see down there is Moses Kuria with a pacifier that he should keep silent 
still ozone has picked up on that as well now we had the u.s ambassador not u.s um, the u.s uh, diplomat i should say one of the u.s ambassadors who was in, the, in this country and this is kathleen tier she was meant to meet up with the, the delegates and uh, that particular side of kenya was to be headed also by cs thread moses Kuria. still the same story and you can see moses Kuria is actually I'm, 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 I'm getting to be a bit measured with my yeah. words. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good to be yeah, yeah. Because you can see there, there is, it's a kennel, and yeah. the kennel for a dog, right? So, so the barking dog uh, of, uh, of the government somehow has been also been put under control, so to speak. This is a editorial cartoon. And uh, this is what, to, what, what also I should say Stano has drawn in the People Daily. There is this slow in coming conversation that everyone is really talking about a glacial slowness snail pace the Raila Ruto dialogue and excuse me which century should we expect you to be here Kenyans are calling for this snail to come home and be on the sitting table there to talk and negotiate <clears throat> on the peace of the country and this is what to just remind you if you're joining us this morning what the editors are holding today it's a running splash in all the dailies let's have or let's save our country that is in the standard a joint commentary by editors or leading media houses that is a standard for you today also if you pick up the daily nation still you're waking up to the same headline as well let's save our country a joint commentary by the editors of kenya's leading media houses at the end of the day we are reminded we all live in one nation sailing on the same boat if it sinks we will all go down with it nobody will be, will be spared and also the people daily let's save our country <coughs> as well voice of reason and this is what we're discussing this morning but a call for negotiation is key ruto raila dialogue is slow in coming shema chodo before we took a short break we were new yes just before we went on break I, I was saying i hope we don't fall prey like the country is being misled to ignore the most important issues for kenyans Maybe to borrow from uh, Major Retired, uh, say, he normally says it's important to rise above the noise. There were coalitions, the, the two particular coalitions, for different reasons, orthogonally different region, reasons, would want us to focus on what we seem to be focusing on, the politics. But I think Kenyans of goodwill need to rise above that and focus on what is it that's ailing Kenyans it's the price, the cost of living. And in that regard, before I turn to the politics, I agree the politics is also important. But I think the economics and the high cost of we'll, living... We'll come to the economics because I it, think we always important. dedicate this. But uh, of course, this is a political economy sort of situation that we have. <laughs> when we cannot really uncouple that's, it, that's, yeah, we'll that's come to the it. Danger. Yes, that's yes. the danger. When we just go that route, then we end up discussing issues that the, eventually the don't solve the problem. But in this particular, if you prefer me that I discuss the politics, the no, 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 because of course I'm moderating and we have, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know where Let we're me headed. So I don't, I don't want to jumble things so that okay. we, we Let don't me. lose also our viewers on what we're really talking about. This Let morning. me discuss yes. the politics then. I think the right to pick it is not in doubt. And I think we all agree on the table uh, that uh, the right to pick it is something, I think it's Article 37, that's captured and protected in the Constitution. However, I watched, uh, I think it was on one of the national TVs, uh, a former police spokesman and uh, uh, Dr. Ikuru Aukot, a respected, or somebody, a major architect of the new Constitution, talk about issues of, um, in particular, they were addressing that issue of Article 37, the right to pick it. I think we cannot take away the fact that picketing, yes, but peaceful is key. I, I, the former spokesperson raised a case that um, in his backyard, CIA for that matter, you find people by midnight already laying roadblocks with rocks, okay, burning uh, tires, um, blocking vehicles. That, by that time, the police are not even in sight. So one is left wondering, uh, in this particular case, uh, is it right to blame? Who do we blame? Mm -hmm. And I think a point is being made. I don't know who 
I think it's uh, Honorable Imani, Kimani Ichungwa. I don't always agree with him. But when he says that, yes, let the religious leaders condemn excessive use of police, but in the same measure, condemn the, the, the use of crude weapons by the demonstrators. I think it must cut both ways equally. But I hold the premise that what we require is um, an, an all-inclusive national conversation. Mm -hmm. For the politics, I stop at that. All right. I, 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 want, I am actually with Dr. Oshua, though, that um, we should be talking about the economy. Because that is, to my mind, yes. where the fundamental question is. Mm -hmm. What you are seeing is a symptom of something. So we must go to the real problem. But, uh, you know, so uh, allow me then to, to make the point on, on, on this question of uh, responsibility and then go back to, uh, as a political point, then go back to the economics. Um, when I was myself, I'm talking about my own particular circumstance as an individual called Dorito Moridi, when I was arrested by police last week, I was arrested in Yahuru, leading a peaceful demonstration. A demonstration that had been notified of the police well ahead. As a matter of fact, when the police joined us, we were very, uh, we, we thought they had come to provide security because we had uh, notified them. Our, um, uh, our team had sat with the police to agree the route, or if you like the American way, route of the demo. And you can see from the clips, we are literally holding our placards, talking about the cost of living. But the police still found it necessary to arrest us. And uh, of course, in the end, they did not even charge us. They battle us in police vehicles, go and detain us in the police station. Yeah? Uh, 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 we are held there for the day and then let go at the end of the day. So, the, 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 I hear you and agree with you that as we condemn, or the clergy or whoever, as we rebuke uh, bad behavior, mm -hmm. it should not be on one side, True. it should be across. But I also want to plead that uh, the, our colleagues point that who bears what responsibility? Sure. No doubt. Because you see, and this is the, where I want to transition back to the economy, the citizen by herself cannot control the cost of living. That's why the citizen elects a government. That's why this government has the machinery to do certain things with the economy so that the cost of living is affordable in, in, uh, uh, for the citizen. Mm. Uh, our colleague spoke, for example, uh, to the point of food production. The citizen by herself may not be able to solve the full question of food production. True. It requires government action. Now, the reason the right to picket is there as a fundamental right is this. When the citizen elects a government, and the government then is not hearing the citizen, or chooses not to hear, or chooses to act in ways that make life unbearable for the citizen, mm -hmm. what is the citizen to do? And that is the, uh, why the citizen is on the street. Now, if we go for a moment then into what could government be doing? What are the things that have led to anger on the street? There should be no doubt in anybody's mind, Kenyans are angry about the cost of living. True. One thing that this government can still do is to step back from the Finance Act the taxation measures that are increasing the cost of living. That is an action available to this government to do today. Good point. We, we, we don't have to be on the streets. Um, what other things can this government do? This government can step back from uh, 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 wasteful expenditure. It can balance its budget. You know, and this government has, has uh, compared itself to the Kibaki government, and Dr. Ushudu, you were there. In the first three years of Kibaki administration, 2003, 2004, 2005, you had a balanced budget. That is why the economy worked. That policy choice is available to this government to take. So that, yes, we, you, you say dialogue, but you see, you, you, you are presuming as though <laughs> the, the citizen or the Azimio coalition can do these things. We cannot. 
it is only government that can take the action of balancing the budget. Mm -hmm. It is only government that can take the action of, of uh, uh, repealing the Finance Act. And those would, to my mind, be the basic steps of uh, uh, putting Kenya back on the right trajectory. All right. Mm -hmm. So I wanted just to, even as we're delving uh, deeply on the, the issue of, uh, of the issue of how we have the blowbacks of this economy, I'd raise the issue of the $21 billion that... Uh, Shilling. Maybe it's a typo. Shillings? Uh, no, no, it's not really a typo. I mm -hmm. think when, sometimes when they say if you take a, a text out of context, it becomes mm -hmm. a, a pretext. Oh, okay. You should have read it contextually. <laughs> okay. So this is the Kenya, Kenya loses $21 billion shillings on demo day. As uh, Nairobi Security Exchange uh -huh. activity dips, uh, President Ruto is under pressure to save economy as rival sides dig in the brow of a cost of living. And this is on page 10. I'll just head over there so that I can give <coughs> you maybe uh, a snippet of what they're saying so that we can actually put it into perspective. That we'll be able now to get the clarity of what it really says here. And now it's, it has been broken down. Where is it again? It seems to me like uh, you're talking uh, about the, the, the stock exchange or yes. the securities exchange, securities exchange uh, lost. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Yeah. It's not real money, but it is. But, but it is, right. it is yeah. paper wealth. It yeah. Is, uh, yeah, yes, so, so they say, okay, I can just read a snippet, mm -hmm. maybe, where mm -hmm. if my director may just pick it up in full. They, we said the Kenya Private Sector Alliance kept up, mm -hmm. has estimated that uh, the Kenyan economy is losing a staggering three. A billion shillings, that is 21 uh, million shillings. Million dollars, yeah. Million dollars every yes. day. Yes. As a result of the anti-government protest, this figure has raised concern among businesses leading Kepsa to issue a warning that the country cannot afford the prevailing political activities. Mm -hmm. Right? Every day. So maybe this, this billion mm. is what you're saying like, is a typo. Yeah, yeah, but it's not. It's not twenty-one billion dollars. Yes, yes, yes. The, you are talking about twenty-one million, million dollars, the equivalent of, of three yes. billion, billion shillings, per shillings day. which is what Mweshimwa had already uh, offered from sure. the very beginning. Okay, again, it could not be a, maybe a typo. <clears throat> Looking at the rippling effect in numbers, the way they've broken out, they're saying that Mombasa's port total cargo throughout sh shrunk to thirty-three point seven million metric tons, from thirty-four point seven. Uh, six metric tons in 2021, a 2.93% year on year drop, pushing the volumes to the lowest level since 2018 compared with Dar es Salaam with the same period. Cargo through, uh, throughput on the central corridor increased from 14.04 million metric tons in 2017 to 19.02 million metric tons in 2022. Uh, Mombasa handles 4,000 containers per day, with the SGR only taking about 1,300 of them. Uh, Kenya Private Sector Alliance says the economy is losing, that is what we read, uh, daily $21 million as a result of the anti-government protest. The analysis based on official economic productivity data for 2022 shows that the com complete shutdown of the economy could cost an average of 36 billion shillings, that is 255 million shillings in a single day, with Nairobi losing 22 billion uh, shillings. Okay, mm. so we'll take that to be a typo. Mm. But let's just explore this uh, loss of money mm. uh, every day right. with the protests. And what now, as you've mentioned earlier, Tanzania is gaining from this particular protest. And we seem to be losing the sheen as a country as far as the investor-friendly environment uh, is concerned. What will be the remediate action? Despite the fact that we're talking about the conversation on this, yes, it will be, oh, they come on the table, <laughs> and then the country is in peace, then what? You know, I mentioned earlier, political stability and economic uncertainties have a very serious issues that the government needs to really listen, because there's no way anyone would come to invest in this country with this kind of things that are happening. No one would put his money here. Mm -hmm. You can invite all the people and they can come visiting, but at the end of the day, putting pen to paper, and putting money into the account here, putting, it's not going to be easy with the kind of situation that we are seeing. Um, look, the demo was yesterday, yeah. but I can tell you on Tuesday, there were no loadings of trucks or anything from Mombasa port. Mm. None. Because nobody wants to take a risk. The trucks will be on the way on Wednesday. Um, these trucks are not going to come into Nairobi. They are going all the way to Rwanda, to Burundi, mm. to, to, to Uganda, to South Sudan. 
you are affecting business. That's why sooner or later, if these things continue, people will be looking for those countries, will be looking for alternative routes. Already they have been, uh, you know, Uganda has been trying to do their, you know, things across on the other side. Yes. So I, I think we need to see this thing in, a, in a, the larger picture of this, the impact of this um, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the economy. We may say our media is biased and say, oh, you know, all this story, they are looking at one side. Or, mm. But let me tell you, watch international news. They know what you are saying. They know what these people are saying. But they have, all of them are saying the demos are about the cost of living. Mm -hmm. All international media, that's the story out there. So never mind what other stories there, the politics or whatever. But what is capturing the attention of everyone else is about the economy. And the economy has a risk. You know when there's an issue of cost of living and people demonstrating because of the economy, the risk of a country degenerating into chaos. Mm -hmm. It's happened in many countries all over the world. People are demonstrating on that and, you know, the people have, you know, and, and this, is the, this is the thing that we should be worried about. We are losing. As we as I sit here today, our businesses were shut down. Mm -hmm. Yesterday we didn't, we didn't run our business. You can't send any distribution trucks anywhere in this country. Uh, the last, today, mm -hmm. yesterday, and even tomorrow, no one is going to risk you send a truck from Nairobi to Lake Hippia or to mm. Musia to deliver goods, who will send a truck? <coughs> Nothing will be moving on the road. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it is so, I think even as leaders uh, go and uh, do their rallies, in, uh, as government leaders go to Kericho and do the rally because Kericho is, is home tough and peaceful, I think they need to look at the bigger picture that, look, the economy is hurting. Mm -hmm. Business is at a standstill. You know, that's the thing that they need to be look concerned about. Mm -hmm. So fighting these people on the streets is not going to be a solution. I mean, someone who has nothing to lose will be on the street even tomorrow. Uh, like, you know, Mashima Shem said, by midnight they'll still put the rocks on the, on the yeah. streets and they'll be out. But, you know, so uh, grandstanding and sending police, and it's even making the matter worse. Mm -hmm. You know, the way the leaders are talking on the media, particularly government, that is the thing that puts people off because you, now anybody watching will say tomorrow there will be a confrontation. Mm -hmm. So I, I think we need to, we, I, I don't see any other way out of this thing. I don't see, if, in fact, if indeed, as, as Shem said, the concern is people are not about cost of living, they have other things, politics and elections and so forth, you can pull the rug from under their feet. Call a meeting to discuss the economy, as everyone is saying. Mm. Call a national dialogue to discuss the economy. Mm. Let them come up now with other agenda. All right. They, they should but, have a moderator there yes. and say these are the issues that we want to discuss. Correct. Right. Yeah, so it doesn't have to be someone, you know, putting the... We should send what the will be, there. Well, <laughs> no, we do a good <laughs> job, no doubt. <laughs> yeah, they should send the moderator and say these are the issues. As Kenyans, Correct. we want to discuss these issues yeah. and top-notch, now talking cognizant of what you really want to be discussed, yeah. that politics is off the table. Correct. It's all about the economy. But we cannot really uncouple the economy from politics. That's, that's, not, yeah. that's no, it. How, how, how can you yeah, yeah. If the, the it depends on politics. what politics you're talking about. If the politics that is being <laughs> raised by the opposition is about the election. Yes. Mm, uh, yeah, of yeah. The server. The server, yes. Yeah, I mean, no, that one, the, that one should uh, be off the table. That one will be <laughs> red, the red line. <laughs> but if it's uh, about the Sufria movement. But if mm -hmm. it is about the Sufria <laughs> and food <laughs> and jobs, right. employment, those mm. are the issues. Let me tell you, these guys have got something that resonates. And they're on it now. Mm. So never mind whatever the government says. Nobody will listen. Everyone is saying it's the food. Mm. So I think, but, but it is yeah, the food. Uh, okay. I know it's it's, it's a so, it's done. No, it let, is the food, and let, actually, let, let government should uh, yeah. uh, negotiate he's eating with into my Kenyans. time, but he's used yes. to doing that. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> yeah. First of all, you actually did give you opportunity to have a rejoinder. You say you were skipping off. You was you was you was. He was keeping uh, something. What, uh, uh, Did you say I, what he was keeping? Economical with yeah, oh, yes, okay. yes. Was economical yeah. with the truth. I, 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 when uh, uh, he just learned here, if, if we believe what's being reported, Rama is out guarding his hotel. That is quite a big thing, as you could see. Mm -hmm. uh, the glass is broken, so the guy is sort of saying, you know, go through me before you get there. So maybe it was a, a ninja reaction to saving his property. You know, people get emotional about those things. Yeah, but he did. But, uh, that, that's what I was asking, if I may just hack back there. How mm. then should you, because uh, I know most of you maybe here are also pistol owners. Uh, I don't know how you normally uh, use or what is Let the etiquette of you. carrying this particular, yeah. Let me assure you that uh, uh, when you get down to having a, a personal concern of that type, 
uh, you like to take out your gun just to scare out people. It shouldn't happen, doesn't happen ordinarily, but it does not go there. It's a very specific situation uh -huh. uh, that, you know, I, we, we can't c talk about it without commenting extensively on the individual and we don't mm. have all of the circumstances. Sure. I want to take you back slightly and to say that uh, um, uh, Governor Derito has spoken eloquently about the need, for example, to get back to a more balanced budget. A balanced budget requires that the deficit is narrowed uh, or eliminated, let's say, you know, uh, in the best case scenario. You do that by containing your expenditure and you do some, you know, collecting your revenue as well. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you do it, you cut your coat in accordance to your, to your size. Yes. Kenya has a young population, mm -hmm. very young population. You can, sorry, let me step back. That can be done as an interim stabilizing measure, but there's going to have to be a time when for us to be able to catch up with the challenges, demographic challenges that we've got, we're going to, you know, to borrow a bit, we're going to tax a bit so that we can keep up with this and we have to manage inflation on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. That must be a continuous target. In fact, our workers lose more uh, 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 from inflation uh, clawing away from their real earnings than even does taxation. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, and you have seen that over the last 10 years, you know, Koto and so on were very quiet, you know, even though they could have been rising up against inflation. So there are, there are a number of economic issues that need to be done, uh, which would change, which should change the posture of the administration uh, going forward. That's how I see it, going mm -hmm. forward. I do not think that it is... Uh, uh, the courts can decide what they want to do, but I want to comment on the matter before the court. All I can say is that uh, the Finance Act is not something you're going to say, we'll throw it out completely, go and start again. Or that the government will say, ah, we want to repeal this one, we have a better one that is coming. Uh, no, it doesn't work like that. It's likely that uh, they, 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 they probably look at the clauses that are most offensive mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so on. But I think that... Um, uh, Everybody must be listening as well as they look at the next cycle of budgeting. And it starts in September, uh, another month away. Uh, people are going to be more conscious that there is a strong pushback in the, in, in the community, in the, in the nation, against taxation. Mm -hmm. And I think, let's <coughs> accept it in a very perverse way, though, that uh, Kenyans are getting sophisticated about uh, how they perceive the social, economic, and political environment. Mm -hmm. They're pushing back on taxes. Uh, in many countries, we have seen this in the more, a lot more weak countries as it were. But now people are, and I think it's because of uh, extensive information that's now available. I think governments in general will now be planning this with that in mind. I have said one thing before on this show. I have said that the, the economic managers that we have mm -hmm. ought to have been over the last maybe two years, you yes. could say, uh, ought to be talking more about what it is they ought to do in the economy. Economies always get out of work and then are brought back. It's a continuous balancing act, continuously. <coughs> they just can't keep quiet. And then there is a void. And then the only person speaking now is, is the person who should be making the final decisions mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. and also in our, in our own uh, social media and that, that kind of thing, we should feed in the correct information. Uh, I let people debate it. Good, good ideas will come from all manner of places and so on. I think we're becoming a sophisticated economy in my view. And it should not be surprising, it should not be surprising that there is a high cost of living at one time, that there is extensive uh, borrowing at another time. This is what happens. And then you have to bring it back in, uh, back in. Make sure mm -hmm. the euro bonds are doing what we're supposed to do. They're not being collected and are not utilized uh, correctly. You can't simply tax one area extensively. Nigeria tried this with fuel. All the taxes, I think 90 something percent of their taxes were coming from, from fuel, yeah. fuel oil. Until prices began to dip. The whole the billionaire economy was top stubby as they say. Uh, so this issue of diversification even of sources of revenue. Lastly, uh, and uh, as underlying these issues of high cost of living, there's another layer of complexity about Kenya which is about income distribution. If you look at who owns how much in Kenya, it's so mm. warped <clears throat> that this ought to be the area of focus. For me, and also talking as an economist now, measures that in the long term mm. seek to reduce the, the level of income maldistribution, income 
uh, inequalities, inequalities is, is, is uh, the more direct word, mm. uh, are extremely, extremely useful. Inequality has a cost. Mm -hmm. we can, one day we'll talk about it. Equality has a major cost, uh, as it were. So we are dealing with the cost of living, yes. That's immediate. That's within us. We can't doubt that cost of living is high. I feel that when I pay my electricity bills, I can tell you. Mm -hmm. uh, and other, other, other costs are so. But underlying this is who has what. It is so, so out of line. All right. So I'm sure that... that but I guess I'm point to your picking of Nigeria as well. When we have a President uh, Tunubi really coming to power mm -hmm. and uh, the immediate action he takes is now to just offset uh, the fuel subsidy, where has it plunged Nigeria? Because even now, he's uh, declared a state of emergency because of food crisis. The fuel prices have skyrocketed in Nigeria. When you come to power, and some of the immediate actions that you take might have very severe consequences, can that be truncated so that at least you don't just pull the rug and then there's such a, a shock therapy, so to speak, that uh, it's not really a shock therapy because it's not therapeutic anyway, even fuel prices go up. But there's such a shock that I think, uh, no. is, is, you know, reverberating in the economy. You have a good point, yeah. there, Can they do? Uh, and I think this is also what really happened with the current uh, yeah, administration. Yeah, administration. You come to power, you say, Need. we are offsetting the subsidy. You, you send shocks into the economy. Prices are skyrocketing. Could we have also uh, undone ourselves with this particular subsidy that has I, happened I, in Nigeria? Yeah. Uh, I think the Nigerian was a good example demonstrating uh, a recent history for those who do follow. Um, but there are, those two approaches have been debated uh, in the literature quite a bit. When you have a reform, do you sort of immediately at once? Yeah. Yes. Some people say mm -hmm. that's the best way, then people learn to get forward. Mm -hmm. Or do you sort of uh, bring in, in, in basement? Piece by so piece piece. I think life is usually about a bit of both, so right. to say. Are you, there's none of which you can initiate and then turn your eyes. You have to carefully uh, manage. If you do it once, there may be extreme cases that you still have to come back in and support and so on and so forth. But you're right, these are issues to be debated. And I think in Kenya, we must also now be willing to debate these issues of political economy continuously. <coughs> That's the only way we are going to keep governments in check. We must discuss the consequences mm -hmm. of what they do. Right. Uh, Bill Okero, you know, of course, when you fast uh, for the longest time and uh, from Ramadan, you can't just come and take Ugali. When you open your fast, right. you'll actually go into a shock and be in a coma somewhere in the hospital, mm -hmm. isn't it? Because of, yeah. if your intestines have contracted, you know, you in digestion. Uh, in, you know, you know uh, the Bali depends on you know, the, the situation of a country. Our countries are run by MF. They right? are run by IMF, IMF because IMF. we have become a basket case. But in countries where can, you know, the independent of IMF and lenders and donors and partners. Subsidy is a normal thing when there's a crisis. It, I have said in this, on this table that in Europe, hundreds of billions of dollars are being spent in the last three, four years to subsidize energy, to subsidize gas, fuel, to subsidize food. Transport. It's happening in America, in Europe, hmm. because there's no government water salt that will not subsidize to make the cost of living cheaper for its people mm -hmm. when the situation is bad. Mm -hmm. But you know, when you wake up and say, no, we can't subsidize, it has nothing to do with, that. and they don't give any rational argument except that to say we can't afford, it's not sustainable. And the following morning, he's subsidizing political briefcase, contractor to supply, KNTCs and other things, 20, 30 billion shillings. Today is on the news, KRA says we have lost, you know, billions of shillings in KNTC to sub because of this subsidy on, 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 on food. And, and you don't see the prices of the sugar that has been imported through that subsidy going down. You don't see the price of the maize, of the, of the wheat, of the cooking oil, of anyone <coughs> being affected by those things. So I, I, think, I think what we are saying is when you talk of subsidy in Kenya, for example, on fuel, the issue is very simple. There are nine different levies and taxes on fuel. For heaven's sake, just remove some of those levies, remove some of those taxes. That is not subsidizing. And during the campaigns, the same administration says, when we get in, we are going to remove those levies, mm. we are going to reduce those taxes. And what happens? They double from 8% to 16%. So I, I, I think really we are, we, are not, we, are not, we are not serious when we 
argue on some of this, this thing because people are also not dumb. The Kenyans can see clearly. You say this today and tomorrow is again a different argument. It's not about affordability. Mm -hmm. Kenyans are paying taxes. They're giving you three, two trillion shillings every year. Last year I was two trillion. The previous year was two trillion. You know, better than any other, all the other regions combined, all the whole of East Africa combined, we pay that amount to one country, Kenya. So the question is, how, am I, how is my money being used? You don't want to discuss. You, don't, you keep telling Kenyans for the last 20 years, a third of the money is lost on corruption. You're not dealing with it. You're telling Kenyans, a substantial amount of that money is also again being lost on inefficiencies, wasted, you know, misplaced priorities. Uh, projects that have stalled, according to the Parliamentary Budget Office, Projects that have stalled, have been abandoned by government, runs into two, almost 2. Point, uh, is it 2.1 trillion. Mm. It's madness. Go from here, there's a building, uh, Kirdi, I think you will see next to the, the prison here. I mean, anybody who has seen that building for the last 10 years is under construction. A multi-billion mm. thing that is being built, you know, for supermarkets and malls, government, state corporation. I mean, so you know, abandoned and these things are all over. So the money is not about revenue. I think government needs to find a way of, of really sympathizing with these people. You cannot say Mama Mboga must pay. We want to be fair on tax. Which Mama Mboga can pay? People are struggling to make a thousand shillings. You want them to pay taxes. And then you know she can see where the tax is going. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I think I think in my view really um, we, we, I am one of those people who are very very hopeful that President William Ruto will change the way things are being done in this country. I mean, it's full of energy and, you know, brilliant guy. I thought now, this time, things will be turned upside down. As my friend um, uh, David Indy has said, you know, we, we, you guys should have been were ready that things will be turned upside down in this country. Yes, but not in the manner in which they did. <laughs> <laughs> the balance. We, but, but, what, 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 we, we expected uh, the status quo to be changed in a manner that will hold people to account and, 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 and you know, and, 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 and deal mm. with the government in a different way, but not turning upside down so that mm. me and you and everybody else start suffering because of taxes. Right. The Even now for the preacher mm -hmm. down on the street in Aga Khan, uh, preaching a day now, you'll be taxed a thousand shillings. Yeah. I, I doubt if he actually co collects that from know, his obituary in Aga Khan and uh, and uh, they and make a, G. They make a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> the ball on, on a light touch, now that you are uh, tickling the Nairobi County government, next month I think the leadership will be New York to sign a twinning agreement, the governor and the, the, and the mayor of New York City. So some positive things happening Good. in that regard. But more importantly, I wish we had listened, and particularly the president, had listened more to Okia Umtata, Senator Umtata, mm -hmm. coming back to the Finance Act and the yeah. economics. Mm -hmm. You know, Umtata did say, my friend, Mr. President, yeah. instead of us going to battle this in court, why don't your people just do the right thing constitutionally mm -hmm. uh, so that we don't need to go to court? Because mm -hmm. if that doesn't happen, I'm afraid I have to go to court. And I must give Okia Umtata due credit. Probably of all the mm. advisors the president has, mm. he probably needs to retain Okia Umtata as a private advisor mm -hmm. because he seems to do get certain things done right. Mm -hmm. right. Either the president is not listening to his advisors or the advice given or the quality of, his, of the advice he's given is wanting. One of those two. Because one would have expected that... Uh, glaring mistakes that are being made by the government would have been avoided. I, I do know that uh, the, the, the Catholic bishops, I think, called for repeal. Uh, my good friend, uh, Chairman... And I'm Catholic. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> yes, and, and he's Catholic. And I went to a Catholic school. <laughs> uh, he's calling it, uh, we could tweak uh, clauses here and there. But they say also a rose is a rose, by whichever name we call it. I think it's, it would be prudent if the president was bold enough saying, right. look, let's call, recall mm -hmm. this finance law. Whatever things that are not right, I think 80% of it, for me, is pretty good. But that 20% that's wanting, can that be tweaked so that we find a solution to this, uh, right. this issue? If I may remind you of uh, Hezekiah, if you read... Uh Masaibu Abu Nwasi and Ezekiah as well. Right. Yeah? It was Abu Nwasi, Masaibu Abu Nwasi. Mm -hmm. 
that 80% you're talking about is good, but the 20%, you remember right. when Abu Nasi sold his house, his mm -hmm. mansion to a gentleman, mm -hmm. and uh, he had one nail right. that uh, he had actually nailed on the door on one of the bedrooms there, mm -hmm. one of the rooms. And then he, he said, you see, I've sold you this house, this mm -hmm. big mansion, right. but there is one nail that is mine. Right. <laughs> this nail, this single nail is mine. <laughs> yep, that one. Don't touch. Don't touch. You it bet. is mine. Then he said, Hi, to Meloana, to Meloana. He went away. And he said, A nail. It's just right. a nail. So he, he came back mm -hmm. one day with, uh, he wanted to actually get back the house. You no, know, but uh, he was wondering, Oh, no, I made a, I made a mistake mm -hmm. to actually get this house. So he went back and called out on the gentleman knocked on the door, rapped and said, hey, still remember me? Yes, mm -hmm. yes, 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 of course I do remember you. Right. Is, is my nail still there? He said, oh, of course. Mm -hmm. What's the nail? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll come back tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So, Abu Nwasi went on to, to the butchery. Right. And he bought some goat intestines, stuck them in a bag. When the following day knocked on that particular house, right. he said, hey, Nkoko, 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 yeah, yeah. Can I just success my nail? Mm -hmm. He went and got these intestines, put them on that particular, hang them on the nail. <laughs> said, we'll see you, we'll see you. Well. <laughs> it stayed there. <laughs> they could not do anything because the stench that was coming from that room mm -hmm. is the 20% right. that you're talking about, the KRA. <laughs> <laughs> out of the finance act <laughs> now this gentleman he had no option because mm -hmm. abunwasi wanted back his house right other than to sell back the house to abunwasi because mm -hmm. he could not stay in a room that was really stinking stinking from the that, intestines that, that were coming that, from that particular that room <laughs> right <laughs> and this is where now we have okio mutata right uh if you look even the, on page uh, 13 or 12 of uh, the standard it says treasury plans to use new taxes Mm -hmm. uh, to pay illegal one trillion shillings debt. This is what Okio Mtata is raising mm -hmm. here. Because now we move to court because of a 20% that uh, is right. contentious. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we have him saying that uh, 21, 211 billion shillings, the government says it will borrow to finance its 3.6 trillion shillings budget mm -hmm. if the court of appeal does not lift freeze on the Finance Act 2023. And here is where um, Okio Mutata is wondering mm. these new taxes that will, will be paid illegally. Could you just comment on this as well? Just, uh, what page uh, are you looking at? Uh, you are yeah, on, uh, page, page, sorry? 12. Yeah, it's page, page 12. It's page 12. Page 12 the, the bell, but I want, I want maybe, may I, may I, before you leave the I, previous topic, can, can I, I comment? Conclude, before you go to this, I can conclude my own conclude Tata. Tata. Oh, okay. Yeah, on yeah, Tata okay. issue. And, and I'm glad he's raising the issue of the debt. I think, um, is it Wanjigi? Jimmy? Jimmy. Has also been on this. And I know this is an issue that Kenyans would prefer to gloss over. I think it's not right. When we lose trillions, and it's not clear, the trillion euro bonds, where did mm. the money go? The Pandora Papers, where did the money go? I think we really need to be honest with ourselves. My hope was that if Kenya Kwanza was genuine in reform, in in, 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 in stamping its feet on graft and ensuring that uh, there's justice. And I think the courts are doing, in my view so far, very well in terms of being, being, the, be, 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 being the moral of society in terms of up, upholding the rule of law and justice. But I think the Kenya Kwanzaa needs to go much further and, and op, open the real wounds where is it that the trillions went? So the tax that, the debts that we are paying, really. We can gloss over them, but then I think we lose it. Can we claim them to be, to be complying with the rule of law to Thank the you. letter? All right. So also the, the sentiments that are being put forward, uh, before I come to Nuritu Muridi, are, are they hyperbole uh, from Jimmy Wanjigi regarding the pay, uh, debt payment? Because we've had the Auditor General getting concerned that we do not this debt is a moving target right what is the actual debt that the country is actually paying uh we're given uh you know some trillion of shillings that we're paying but 
if the Auditor General will raise questions that mm. we do not have an exact figure, that she's not aware of what we're actually paying is a moving target, yeah. Yeah. Then, we, we, then we do have a problem. Then the question is, is what Okeo Mtata saying right. and Jimmy Wanjigi true, that right. first of all, SGR has been paid off? Mm. What are we paying? Sure. Right? So are these some of these debts that we're paying illegal debts that have already been paid? Or some mm. of the debts that did not go through Parliament Parliament's uh, uh, yeah. approval, and, and should, uh, we should not be taking responsibilities uh, as Kenyans. You, you will be surprised, Dibal. This whole point, in fact, boils back to cost of living. Here is how. We told you, government uh, needs to do a balanced budget. And I know my economist colleague is saying, we may not be able to do it forever. Okay, We might do it for two or three years, or four, bring things back into balance. Now, why is that important? When you don't have a balanced budget, what it means is that you have to borrow to finance uh, your budget. If you have a balanced budget, you are living within your means. Now, if you live by borrowing for 10 or 15 years, you will find that you have a very gigantic debt. Mm -hmm. Secondly, the Auditor General is correct. There is, firstly, a presentation problem. You have seen people asking today, is the budget 3.6 trillion or is it in fact 4.5 uh, uh, yeah, 4 4 trillion? Why? Because the amount to pay the principal is not shown as part of the budget. You would think, I mean, that doesn't well, make it sense. It should be part of the budget. It should be shown yeah. as part of the budget because we have to pay the principal. But what is being shown is the amount to pay interest. interest. Now, so you have to ask yourself, these 900 billion that we have to pay in principal payment <coughs> this year, mm. okay, where will it come from? And that's the Jimmy Wajigi type point. Mm. That because in the appropriation, because it's not shown in the budget, it does not show up in the appropriation bill. Okay? Mm. And that's what uh, his auditor, mm -hmm. uh, not, not the auditor general, the private auditor hired by this gentleman was talking about. Because every year, the amount that we are using to pay the principal debt payment mm -hmm. is not being shown as part of the budget. Right. And that is where they're saying, okay, is, is it actually legal then? Or are we paying <coughs> these debts illegally? Of course, having contracted the debt, you have to pay. So, all confusing a little bit, but what then is the answer? The answer is to balance your budget. What this regime, or any regime that was coming into power now, the most realistic option is to balance your budget, or if you can, in fact, have a budget surplus. This is what uh, Shemu Shudu here mm -hmm. and Kibaki did back sure. in 2004. And once they had three years of balanced budget, actually 2004 was a budget surplus, mm -hmm. they had been able to bring back. It's like if you have a truck and it's about to tip over, mm -hmm. and you need to put it back gently mm -hmm. on the correct road surface. That's what needs to happen. now. You asked the question, Nigeria, Kenya, our relationship <laughs> with IMF. Our colleague is correct. IMF is like an ICU attendant. Mm -hmm. When you see yourself dealing with IMF, it is because your country, your economy is in, in bad shape. <laughs> terrible shape. Mm -hmm. Now, IMF prescription is the same globally. Tax more. Mm -hmm. okay? Remove subsidies. Mm -hmm. Those are the IMF subscriptions, uh, prescriptions in Kenya, in Nigeria, and elsewhere. They are wrong, those prescriptions. What should we have been doing in Kenya? What Bilo is saying, look, your citizens are hurting. So use subsidies to, uh, stabilize. to stabilize, to, you know, to cushion them against the escalation in the cost of living. How, where will you find the money, you ask? Well, from other parts of the budget. For example, where you are doing duplication, and we have said so on mm. this show many, many times before. Right. Are, you can in easily shave between five to six hundred billion from government expenditure now mm -hmm. by doing the correct thing. Mm -hmm. So now if you go in sum and ask, ah, mm -hmm. we are saying let us save our country. What does it really mean? To save our country, my view, withdraw the Finance Act. I know my colleague is saying how. You see, the Finance Act in any year contains the incremental tax. Mm -hmm. it does, so the fact that the, the, the Finance Act has been suspended 
It is not that taxation has been suspended. It is the incremental tax, the new taxes. Mm. That is what has been suspended. The Income Tax Act has not been suspended. We are still paying tax on profit. We are still paying uh, pay as you want and so on. So, live within your means. It is possible. All you do, if you withdraw or when you withdraw this Finance Act, it means you stay at the level you were last year. Right. My view is that you can go further towards balancing your budget and that will take the pressure completely off. As to this question of negotiating or, I don't know, talking to uh, dialogue with opposition leaders, look, I mean, I speak, uh, my capacity in this coalition is chairman of economic council. We are not interested in handshake ourselves. We are not interested in these politics you're talking about. Just go and, so, in fact, negotiate with the Kenyans. Solve the Kenyans' problems. That's what we are asking for. So let it not be said as though it is us, opposition leaders, who, who please solve the cost of living problem. Negotiate with the Kenyans, and they are telling you they don't want this finance act. Thank you. Withdraw it. All right, allow me to take a short break, Bunyasi uh, Sakwa, and uh, you'll also just uh, get a rejoinder as well, and we wind up on that particular topic. But also more importantly as well is the issue that uh, we have an amendment of the Commission of Revenue Allocation Amendment uh, 2023 that proposes on paring down on commissions in this country. Remember, we have 15 commissions, and uh, they're asking, is there any rhyme or reason why we should be having 15 commissions in the country uh, being funded by you taxpayers? Some of these commissioners, uh, they don't make any <coughs> lick of sense. Uh, yes, this is a constitutional body, but why should they be there full time? This is a, a, a bill that is being sponsored by Didmas Did, uh, Did Barasa. And uh, we'll see if we'll, it will go to see the light of day at the end of uh, the day. We shall look at what the Constitution says. I bet even uh, most of us, if I'll ask you, off the bat, can you name all of these 15 commissions? Well, right? you, yeah, if, yeah, yeah, the, you, yeah. All of them. To, to attempt? Yeah, attempt. Let's see where we'll stop before we take a short yeah. break. Uh, yeah. IBC, uh -huh. Gender Commission, uh -huh, two. Uh, Ombudsman, three. The uh, which one else? TSC. The Public Service Commission. The Human Rights Commission. Six stops at six. I bet also all of you can't actually yeah, name the sure, sure, of them. Sure, sure. Some of them you've never, you've never even heard of them. Mm. Do we need these commissions? And I think no, this no. is a very a good salutary uh, bill that sure. is being sponsored. We shall look at that as well. And uh, why? And why also the US is a bit cagey on Kenya trade deal past the goal 2025. Mm. That is expiring. Let's take a short break. <laughs>